Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with the Fable Realms map build. And if you're new to the project, it's our current feature build. We are replicating the Fable Realms. Okay, this is uh, from Foreground's new sort of skirmish game that was on Kickstarter. I think it's finished now. I'll throw a link up so you can take a nose anyway, but I think it's finished. But anyway, that's what we're doing. And I have reached a stage where the board is essentially built. Okay, and it's time for painting. Well, I wasn't 100% sure on that. Here, come down to the board. And you see, I've done everything on the board. Okay, but I was at home last night and I was umming and ahhing about whether I should add a couple of little extra scatter mountains and whether I should do a few other things. And I think this has become one of those points of, no, it, it's good enough, folks. Yeah. Also, adding extra little bits, especially to the mountains, my concern was there it's one solid range so to speak rather than it being scattered and then I was like well I am interpreting somebody's map do you know what I mean a drawn map where it is exactly as that you know and I've done a damn good job and even if I say so myself which is a rarity for me to say yeah but I don't think I should add extra mountains and stuff like that oh bloody hell I missed a gap there I have to fix that. There's always things to fix, isn't there? But I came in with this sort of, sort of this intention of, oh, you know, we'll do a bit more on it. We'll take it up to the next level and that sort. Of, but no, I don't need to. Yeah. And so we're at the stage where it's time to get priming. Now, looking at the actual texturing that we put down in, in sort of the last episode, yeah, it, it has gone down beautifully and it's worked perfectly. I mean, genuinely, it really has. Uh, there's a couple of little places where I might need to re-engrave a few things. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, that's why we would put the, the channels deep and that sort of stuff. The river valley's deep, so even though they filled up a little, it's still okay. Now, I have got to watch clip put a, a primer onto this, which I'll be starting pretty soon. If I notice areas where the texturing has failed me, yeah, what I can do is I can mix a bit of filler in with the primer and throw that in, and that will give me the result I want. Yeah, that will sort of fix it. But in the meantime, I need to give this a quick clean up. Yeah, clear off all the loose bits that are on it, because loose bits filler, that sort of stuff. And then give it, just give it a white round where we've gone over with the filler and we've gone onto the side and that sort of stuff. It's only a quick watch, got sort of like half hour job. So we'll get that done, and we'll get the primer out, eh? So that's the battle plan, guys. Uh, I'll get this cleaned up. I'll then start priming it. I'll bring back. I'll start filming again once I've, I'm sort of priming it and show you what I'm using and that sort of stuff. <laughs> On a personal note, once it's primed, I've got to paint it, and that's going to pose some challenges. But I'll explain that later. But it's got to be really nervous. <laughs> right, let's crack on. Well, priming is pretty much done, and I'm having a few ups and downs with this one. <laughs> okay, uh, first off, let's talk about the actual priming. Yeah, for the primer, I've been using this, okay? Now, this is, what you call it? This is an acrylic-based paint primer, okay? It's multi-surface, which means wood, brick, what you call it? concrete or metal all that sort of stuff goes on really well and it's designed to prime ready for an acrylic based paint or an emulsion or in the US I think you call them latex paints but basically yeah an acrylic based paint now the way to tell the difference between your primers if you can't tell directly by looking at it is if you if you can wash if on the cleanup instructions you can clean your brush with hot soapy water it's an acrylic based primer if you need any sort of ter if you need any sorts of thinners to clean your brushes afterwards it's an oil based primer okay it's a gloss based primer okay so stick with the acrylic now uh, it's drying really well in fact it's pretty much dry I'm gonna leave it a little while longer yeah, another day to completely dry on the main land masses because there's some areas where I put it in quite deeply. Now, I have had a couple of problems. So let's zoom in and let me show you what's going on with those. Now, if you notice over here and here, there's like lighter strips. Okay, now what had happened is, this is actually, if you remember back to where we put our blue foam down, 
this is actually where one of the sheets is and that's the actual join line. Now I covered that up with milliput and my hope was when I went over it with the fillet I could stipple it and it would blend in. Unfortunately when it came to priming I actually got you get a real sort of true sense of it when you get to the priming stage and you actually start to see all your mistakes and all that sort of stuff but when I got to the priming stage I noticed you could still see the sort of lines so what I did is after I'd finished priming everything I came back to these spots and with the last little bit of primer in my little sort of painty tub I mixed a bit of filler in with it yeah and then re-stippled it now it has worked it's blended those lines out perfectly okay you may be able to see a hint of them because I'm telling you yeah but you know you can't tell them if you, you you're not consciously aware they're there yeah so I'm quite happy with that but I do need to re go over that yeah with a with the dark primer again because I need to color match it or that's going to affect our base coating now moving on now you'll notice I've been trying to keep all these what you call it all these sort of tags clean and that's part of my idea for how I want to display the names yeah and um, what I was doing is as I was painting I was tr trying to be really careful and not go on them then I had to go back and clean them up and uh, after a little while I sort of realized that if I went over them very quickly and lightly to get round the edges it it's different to actually sort of trying to edge around them I actually ended up with less paint on them so they were easier to clean up what I hadn't appreciated is exactly how tough this primer was once it's actually stuck and it's dried because in the case of this Tudor Forest tag yeah uh, it stuck that hard that as I was scrubbing it I've sort of worn the engraving a little which kind of screws up my plans now I'm not completely out on my idea with the what you call it with the what I want to do with the tags okay because I've got my backup plan is I'm having a set laser cut yeah as we speak uh, really thin tags that I can drop over these and have really nice clean tags yeah if my idea doesn't work out and on that basis yeah I will have a spare one of those that I can drop straight down onto it if I can get the other ones to work out if the other ones don't work out I've got a fresh set of tags completely that I can drop onto all of these and they're going to be done in really thin material yeah so that works and it'll work out so I'm not I'm annoyed about that yeah but it might not be a game ender just yet well not a game ender but it might not spoil that idea just yet but it's one of those time will tell things isn't it right my next job is let me zoom out I've got to uh, touch up those little bits I've got to watch I want to do the frame in black now it's primed such a shame to have to paint it but we had to do it you know what I mean yeah, uh, and so, and then I need to go round and there's just, in all the little nooks and crannies, there's little bits that need touching up, so I need to tackle them as well. Hey ho, in for a penny, in for a pound, eh? Right, so with that in mind, I'm going to get me painting mojo on and get stuck in. See you shortly, guys. Little bit of a delay getting back into the studio, guys. What shall I Waiting a bit on foreground and some information and... Bit of the weekend and that sort of stuff and a bit of personal admin, the car broke down. <laughs> so, you know, trips to the garage and all that sort of stuff. And we have a heat wave. It's going to be 25 today and 26 tomorrow, which means, knowing my studio, we're going to get into the mid-30s. Oh, joy. <laughs> At least my paint's going to dry quick. Right, we have reached the point now where I'm fiddling about with the board, to be perfectly honest. And I've, you know, there's a couple of little things I keep seeing that I think I should, I should touch up and I should do. But I've, had, I've decided I need to draw a line on it, yeah, and just move on because it is damn good. Okay, stop. I'm beating myself up here now. It's come to the painting stage, and this was a bit of a challenge for me. Okay, because I've painted lots of terrain, but I've never painted a land before, or this much. And so I was in a little bit of quandary, and I needed some information from Foreground. <laughs> Big Ben over at Foreground came through, gave me the information I needed, and it's time to move forward. Now, if we come down to the board, okay, as you can see, all the name tags are in. I've actually decided I'm going to go with overlaying the name tags with what fresh name tags. It's going to be the quickest and easiest thing to do, rather than my original plan. Yeah, and I think it will probably come off better, to be perfectly honest. 
yeah and it'd be a lot less stressful for me now i've been to the shop i've picked up some paints okay and i've picked up my main green and that's going to be one of my main challenges to get the main land masses done today hopefully get into the mountains maybe even get into the sea now for the land masses for all of them i'm going to go down with a, a single base coat and i've chosen this okay this is jungle green yeah urban jungle sorry from wilkinson's uh, it's a british uh what you call it british hardware you it's a British buy everything cheap store. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, it's an interesting green. But I don't know why I picked this. It just screamed at me to say, get this one, Mel. And so we're going to get it down. And fingers crossed, it's going to look beautiful. And if it doesn't, <laughs> I would be wrong. Yeah, this is one of the challenges. I really don't know, guys. Yeah, but I have good good feelings about this, and this project has gone well so far. So I don't. I think it'll be fine, but you know we don't know till we've got it down. So that's the challenge for today to get this green on it. Yeah, and hopefully get into the mountains and the sea as well. Okay, now and I've got quite a dark base coat down, so it'll be interesting to see how the first coat of green goes over it. Look, I'm rambling now, aren't I? Let's. Suck it up, boss. In for a pound, in for a penny. Let's crack on, eh? It's looking very green, isn't it? All right, so I've got my base coat down on all my sort of land masses. I've also been doing the mountains and just getting those greyed in. Yeah, simple slate grey. Yeah, just that. Obviously, I'm going to dry brush them, highlight them up and all that sort of stuff. Maybe a little wash just to bring out the details. Now, there's a couple of challenges I'm actually faced with now. Uh, looking at the map, obviously, uh, it's, it's colder down here. It's quite warm up here and I have to get the gradient of land changes in there. Now, I'm not so concerned with the hotter areas. I've figured that out. I'm going to dry brush and stipple it up and line it up. Yeah. I've got a, a, the grassy fells here, which is a large area which I'm going to have to do. And then my real challenge is down here where it's going to be colder. Because dry brushing with a darker colour doesn't really work. And so what I may have to do is come in and actually airbrush this. Yeah? A little bit darker. Now, it's not too much of a, a, an issue because, yeah? Looking at the map, it, it's only just edging into the cold area here. So I've only got three small land masses I have to play around with. So fingers crossed it's going to be okay. But I don't know until I do it. Yeah, so my next job is I've got my base green here. Yeah, still in its plastic bag from yesterday. I'm going to throw a little bit of yellow in and start lightening up certain areas. Now I have got lots of woodland to put on this. The woodland I intend to actually airbrush dark green and then lay down some, watch up some ground foliage on that. But, so I don't need to worry so much about doing, you know, this landmass, this landmass, all of this most of this yeah so actually it's it's the job shrunk down in one way with regards to one texturing but obviously i have got to do the airbrush now i've got to fix the forests on uh i'm not sure if this is going to work guys to be perfectly honest but the only thing i can do is give it a go so i'll give it a go let's crack on work continues and it is starting to look beautiful it is actually uh, with regards to the uh, painting technique uh, I, I sort of mixed a bit of stippling then wet blending yeah to sort of create sort of patches and fades around the coastline now a lot of this area is going to be woodlands which is why it's still got the darker patches of green because there's no point in me stippling over it I'm going to be covering it over anyway I've done pretty much that far down okay now I've got a couple of elements I need to deal with yeah in the north which is warmer I need to dry it out a bit so I'm thinking throw a bit of that into the green mix and really lighten it up going with another stipple so sort of progressing from the top coming downwards okay and just highlight the ground just a little just up to the sort of mountain range I'm going to use the mountain range as the divider okay so that's the plan for what you call it sort of 
the north of the map. Coming down to the south, yeah, we've got two issues. Over here, yeah, at the Alavantan Fells, this is a broad, barren waste, so I'm thinking of doing it a little bit lighter, throw a bit of cream into the mix for that one. Yeah, but coming down into these elements here, this is the challenge for me. This is the real challenge. The thing is, yeah, that this is the colder end. Now, typically when it's the colder end, what we would do is we go with darker greens. Yeah, to, ever, to represent evergreens, you know, and the darker ground, so to speak. But I can't. And the reason being is, in the Fable Realm sort of mythology, yeah, these islands, they don't have evergreens on them. They have what's called ironwood, which is a brown tree. Okay, so I, I can't use the evergreen, yeah? Now, you could say, well, what, what about brown melt? I don't think it'll work. So, my battle plan is, I'm going to really lighten these up and maybe even stipple them with a bit of white as a method of sort of creating a, a colder land. Do you know what I mean? Having a much paler ground cover. That's the idea anyway. Fingers crossed it'll work. If not, luckily it's only a small area to sort of paint over, <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest. So fingers crossed we'll be okay. Now you will notice if you look, yeah, that we have got, let me just move that. Yeah, we've got a little bit of overbrushing from the stippling on the rocks. That's not a problem. I can clean that up afterwards, but it, it helps blend the edges between the actual rocks. So let me zoom in so you can see that bit. So here you can see where I was talking about. You can see where I've overbrushed, but you can also see where that stippling and that brushing has also blend that hard gray edge into it, which is what I was aiming for. Now, like I say, I can just go in with a brush very gently and just overbrush again and bring the grey back, which is the battle plan. But I don't want to do that until I've finished with me stippling up in the north. So my next job, yeah, is we'll crack on with the north. Yeah, get that stippled. And once that's stippled, we can come back. Yeah, we can let that dry. I can tackle the south and then come in and tackle the rocks. That's the plan. Let's see how I crack on, eh? She's coming together beautifully, isn't she? She really is. All right then, so uh, the land masses are done. I've got my light colors up here. I've brought it down. I've used that silver to stipple it up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I showed that in the last video. It's a bit weird. I'm sort of getting lost, losing track of what I, I've actually shown you. Yeah, but I used a bit of silver and with the lower end, all I did is I mixed it in with my base coat 50-50. Then I went two parts silver, one part base coat, and then I finished with a final stippling of just silver. Yeah, to get this snow effect. Yeah, the sort of frozen ground in, in the south. Now, I still need to do a little bit of work. I need to sort of do a little bit of white stippling on it. Okay, but before I do that, I have a bigger job, yeah? Uh, the reason I went with stippling is because it was supposed to be cleaner than doing an airbrush so I wouldn't have to clean up all the edges. And as typical, I've gone over on quite a few of the edges and so I need to re-clean those up and set those, you know, basically get them back to grey ready for when we put the oceans down. Now, before I do, I've noticed a few, I, I noticed them a while ago, but I thought it wouldn't be a problem. Let me zoom in for a second. So if you have a look here, you can see these sort of bobbles and stuff on the primer. Now this is just filler from when I was doing my stippling and I've got a few cases of this. Now it's only slight and when I, my original plan was to have a, a much deeper resin pour on this board. But as you can see with moulding the landscape, I've actually dropped it down reasonably considerably. That's not going to allow me to do a deep pour. And I'm starting to get a little bit concerned that these are going to show up. So before I actually tidy all the primer up, yeah, what I need to do is get rid of these. Now, it's actually a really easy job. Yeah, to get it done, what I'm going to be using is, the, get it on the camera, there you go, this. Okay, now this is, this is actually a foreground filer. Yeah, they sell them as a, a hobby tool. And basically it, it's a strip, okay, uh, just around a plastic form, but it's got a nice flat edge there. And then to change the sort of, you just roll it round to get new sandpaper. But what's really good about it is I can come in with and quite a lot of sort of precision. Just take them off. Yeah, and it is as simple as that. And then after that, just get a quick wipe with a damp cloth just to get the dust off and we're good. 
Yeah, so my next job, okay, is I'm going to sand all these off and just make these a bit smoother again. So it's all nice. Yeah, and then I'm going to get the primer out and I'm just going to touch up all these edges. I reckon a couple of hours to get it done. Yeah, because there's a lot of edges. <laughs> there's a lot of edges. You never know, it might go quicker. But in the meantime, let's get cracked on. Edges are all tidied up now and really coming together, guys. Right, next job I want to tackle is the mountains, okay? So I've got my mountain ranges here. Yeah, and of course, the big mountain ranges there. Now, I'm just going to dry brush them up, yeah? And basically what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the base grey and just use the, uh, what should it, touch of silver emulsion that we use for the stippling and the whitening of the southern areas. And so I've already started this and I've mixed up slightly lighter grey. I've got a couple of brushes. Yeah, synthetics. Yeah, that one's for the smaller bits and close to all the edges, so I've got a bit more control. And then this one I'm going to use basically just to get some volume work done across here, because it'll take me forever with this one. So it is a simple matter of, I'm going to dry brush on a layer, yeah, leave it to dry, come back, highlight it up, you know, dry brush again, keep going up until we've got a, yeah, something a little bit more realistic. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to put a brown wash in it yet, to be perfectly honest. I might, I might not, we might add it. Let's just see how we go. Right. See you in a sec. Right guys, mountains are dry brushed up. And I should point out, this isn't just about painting them up, okay? Although that, I would say they are sort of 80% painted. The main thing I wanted to do was to get the highlights on so I could see where my, my sort of low-lying ground, which is just that matte grey, which to be perfectly honest looks a bit poo. Yeah, I knew it'd look a bit poo, but I couldn't tell which bits I needed to touch up until I got some highlights on it. So I've saved me various greys so I can go back over it and touch it up if I need to. But one of my jobs that I need to do now is to sort of help blend this in and break up various patches yeah, of grey that just don't work. Do you know what I mean? Don't work with the landscape. Uh, and to do this, I'm going to be airbrushing, okay, because that's the best way of getting a little feathered and getting it in. If I use a brush, then what I'll end up with is paint splodges, and if I try and stipple it, it'll get all over the mountains, and the airbrush is going to give me the best effect, yeah, of actually getting this done. Now, let me zoom out for a second. Now, if you notice, the board's actually propped up. This is because I don't want to be leaning all the way over with my airbrush because the top of my airbrush cup, I don't want any paint to spill out of it. It's also a bit easier on the back, you know what I mean? It'd actually probably be quite nice on an easel, to be perfectly honest, but I don't have one. I'm not that sort of artist. Yeah, but I've got to airbrush into these. Now, that's sort of a fine job. Yeah, and so to get away with doing a fine job, it's been about two months since I've done any real airbrushing. In fact, it's probably a little bit longer, yeah? And so what I want to do is to get back into the habit of airbrushing and the flow and get the control and, and get the, the muscle memory sort of going again. I'm going to be tackling the forest first because the forests I just want a base coat in a dark green. Yeah, now they're, the forests are this area here, around here, there's a bit around here, there's a whole load all along here and then there's a couple of little splodges and I want to put a few extras in to be perfectly honest do my own thing not so much of large forests but use the colours to help break things up and that sort of stuff and hide mistakes <laughs> yeah so this is Mel, this is Mel's sort of like little twist on the map now the forests are a bit interesting because in the fabled realms yeah in the south it's not evergreens Okay, I think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but it's been that many days since I did that clip. I can't remember what I, exactly what I said, but in the south it's not evergreens. They have this iron wood that they call it, yeah? I think it's a, a take off the American iron wood that they made the first sort of battleships with, that the British cannonballs just bounced off because the wood was that tough. Yeah, but these are brown trees, okay? So I'm going to have to do brown woods around this part. Yeah, and then green woods up here. But I'm going to start with the green, and because most of my mountains are up here, yeah, I'll do the green, I'll transition into the mountains, and if I have enough time, we'll come down and do the brown ones. If I don't, it's a job for the next time, you know what I mean? So, in the meantime, you know what I'm going to say. Crack on.
So halfway through airbrushing on the forest, and I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not having a good time. Uh, it's the airbrush. Uh, I've got a Patriot 105 and it stutters and it splutters and I can't get decent airflow and I've struggled with it for bloody donkey's ages. It's okay for little bits, but the moment you start trying to do any sort of serious volume of work with it, it just, it's just pain in the backside. Now I'm getting frustrated. Okay, and with frustration comes mistakes, and I'm already starting to do a little, a few mistakes. If you come down to the board, you can sort of see where I'm starting to get clumping, where I've had spurts come out. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't want to put any more on. I've tried watering down my paint, but the problem is, if you water your paint down too much, it goes blotchy, and you get this sort of effect, which is not what I want. Okay, not in any way, shape or form. I want, you know, a smooth transition. So, I need to stop. And I need to stop, I need to take a day or, day or two away from it, come back, give it another play, figure out if it's the airbrush. It, it, it is the airbrush, it's not the paint. Yeah, because I've thinned it down to next to water and it's still spluttering and I've cleaned it and I've... It's really annoyed me, yeah, because this project has gone brilliantly the whole way along, and for it to be some, for it to be the tool that fails me in this case, yeah, rather than my technique and that sort of stuff, it's really infuriating. But what can you do? Well, all you can do is take a break from it, come back with fresh eyes, you know, on Monday, and give it another go, you know, and touch it up. I mean, I've got most of the woods down and that sort of stuff. It will only be a little bit of blending and that sort of stuff. And at the end of the day, this is only a dark cover to go down before I put the ground foliage down. Yeah, so it's, most of it's going to be covered up anyway. But it's still frustrating because I end up with little watery spider legs and stuff like that, which means I have to then re-airbrush the thing, which means the woods get bigger. Hey ho! But that's the challenge, and if you want to see how I get on with this challenge, we have one more update on this project, where I finish the forest, the final detailing, we put the ocean in, and it's done. And I've got a week to do it, and it's doable. It is doable, so I'm not overly concerned. Assuming I can get the bloody hairbrush to work. I'm going to swap out for an eye water, I think. I'm sick of it. But anyway, that's just me. Now, in the meantime, obviously, guys, like it, like it if you like it, uh, share it if you know anyone who's interested, if you've got any comments, anything, talk about airbrushes, all that sort of, thing, anything I've done here, in the comments guys, you know, sorry I'm a bit flustered and that sort of stuff. And if you'd like to help me with this little adventure that seems to be going derailing as it is, you can always, yeah, you know, chip in with a bit of a PayPal down below, or jump on and become one of the few that, you know, watch to the end of the videos and really like this stuff and want to, you want to keep it coming, and jump on the Patreon, okay, and just pledge a dollar a month or something like that. It all helps keep everything going and, you know, and me making mistakes and trying to figure them out. It's really frustrating me, guys. But if you would like to help me through this frustrating moment, yeah, jump on PayPal or Patreon, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's all appreciated. But at least I'll put a smile on my face over the weekend while I, like, sob. <sighs> Git. What can you do? Right, guys, I'll see you soon with the final update. It's got to be the final update. I've got to have it done for the end of next week or I'll miss the, the deadline for Gen Con. In for a penny, in for a pound. Catch you later, folks. Ta-ra.